Hey Joe, this week I'm going to talk to you about chapter one of The Innovator's Mindset by George Kuros. This summer, our tech integration specialist, Ms. Verdura, decided to do a book study over this book that I'm super excited about. Now, I might have stolen the idea from Mickey Mueller from Norfolk, but I'm going to give Craig credit since he's my friend. I'm super excited to be able to do some professional development with other teachers in my district who are excited about becoming better teachers. I think a lot of times professional development is less useful because some of the teachers are just being drugged through it. And so this one, which is all teachers choosing to do it, I think is going to be really awesome. We're going to be using the app Seesaw. Um, now, this is going to kill two birds with one stone. One is going to teach us how to use a digital portfolio app that we can then use with our students. And then it's also going to let us have a book study without having to find the time to meet face to face all the time. The book has four main parts. We'll be discussing each of those um, throughout the summer. But I decided I'd make a vlog over each chapter as I go through reading it. And so since this is the first week, we'll be looking at the first chapter, what innovation is and isn't. Now, these vlogs should be a little bit shorter than the ones that I did during the school year. Um, hopefully, I'm shooting for five minutes instead of 10 minutes. Let me know which one you like better as we get closer to August so I can kind of make my vlogs fit what you guys want. So the first thing that caught my attention in chapter one was a quote by William Pollard that he put in there. And I'll put this on the blog so you can actually read it better. Uh, and the quote says, the arrogance of success is to think that what you did yesterday is good enough for tomorrow. Um, and this is something that really hits close to home for me because I had a great year this year with wonderful students. And so it'd be very easy to get complacent and just say, oh, I'll just do what I did last year. It worked so well then. Um, but we always have to be innovating and looking to improve our teaching, be lifelong learners, lifelong improvers. That way we model that behavior for our students and it makes it more fun and exciting for us as teachers. There's two ideas that I have to make my year better than next year. First one is uh, having a reflection journal. So at the beginning of class, we do some sort of warm up activity. Um, and my students usually like those and they're a good way to review information. But I think to take it to the next level, if I just have them jot down one or two sentences reflecting about the purpose of that activity. Um, I think that'll help them learn better and I think it'll help them become better writers, which is super important for people who are going into science. Second thing I wanna do um, is I have the global goals that the UN came up with uh, posted up on my wall, but I think I wanna pick, there's 17 total, so I think if I pick like one per week to go over, that will help my students become better global citizens. And also a lot of them do apply to science such as like climate change and um, protecting life in the ocean, life on land, things like that. So they tie into science and they'll help them become better global citizens. One concept that Craig mentions a few times is, is this your fifth year teaching or is this uh, your fifth time teaching your first year? Um, and that kind of ties in directly with this, is always improving, not getting caught in the rut of just doing the same things because it worked well the year before, but always looking for ways to improve your teaching content. The next thing that caught my attention was this graphic. And I had seen this graphic on Twitter because I've been following George for quite a while. Um, and I'll post this on the blog again so you can read it more in detail. Um, but it says, what do we want kids to do with technology? This one hit a little close to home because a lot of things he said that were wrong are kind of things I'd take pride in my students doing, like making blogs or making videos, things like that. Um, but what he's trying to get across is that technology is a tool, not the overall learning outcome. And so it shouldn't be about students making a blog. It should be a student blog is a way for them to connect with other people or to collaborate or things like that. And I think that's one of the shortcomings I've had so far is I've used the blog as kind of a final end and not just the beginning of a conversation. So looking forward to next year, I'm hoping to um, continue to email parents about their blogs to start some conversations outside of class about the content with their families, but then also to maybe do some quad blogging, which is where you get three other classes in your class, so four total, um, and then each week one group blogs and the other classes can read and comment. I think that'd be a great way to take the learning to the next level, and so it's not just a simple paragraph the paragraph's a starting point, and then the purpose is the conversations and connections that they make after that starting paragraph. So that's something I'm looking forward to doing next year. The last thing that caught my attention was this third graphic, and it says, what do you want leaders to do with technology? Uh, and this one I thought was kind of interesting. And it'd be really easy for me to just take the easy way out and just look at my administration and look for like their shortcomings, be like, oh, they don't do this, oh, they don't do that, oh, they don't do this. 
Um, but as a teacher, I should be a leader in the school. So I want to look at this and see what I could do better for my students as the leader of my students. There's a few things that kind of caught my attention here uh, going through this. Um, one is to build relationships. Uh, the end of this year, one of my students showed me how to use Snapchat. And I think that's a really awesome way for students to get to know their teachers better. Um, they always love seeing pictures of my son Briggs or videos. And I was always hesitant to put those on Twitter or Instagram. Will they be there forever? Um, but Snapchat's a nice way that I can just put them there. They can see it, but then it goes away. And it's not something my kid's going to look back 10 years from now and be like, oh my gosh, it's so embarrassing. Another one is flatten organizations. And I think that's where Twitter comes in super handy is I can interact with people that are at the top of their field, whether that's scientists or educators like George Kuros. And talk to them on a level playing field. And also my students can talk to me and those experts at the same time. I love it when students will tweet me something about science that they noticed outside of science class. Leaders should tell powerful stories. And that's where I've been using Instagram to highlight student work and to tell the story of what goes on in my classroom for anyone who wants to see. Um, it's always important to share our story and let people see how uh, awesome our students are and to make it easy for people to see uh, what's going on in our classrooms. So that's what I use Instagram for. Another one on here is collaboration. And I think that's a super important skill for our, my students to have. And so one way I've modeled that is by doing the Skyping where we meet with experts from all around the world um, and get them to explain their passions to us. And I think those are really cool connections that my students can make um, so they can visualize themselves doing those sorts of awesome research in the future. I hope you enjoyed this week's episode of Educating Joe. Feel free to like, share, comment, or subscribe. And to all you other Educating Joes out there, have a great week.